Here we go then folks, this is the iGo Cross. Is it the ultimate go anywhere city car? Let's find out, shall we? No, no, no. I mean, it's, it's much better on the tarmac. Let's not take this off road. <laughs> Times are hard for the city car. Small cars are dying off because most manufacturers just don't think dinky little models like this have a future. Peugeot, Skoda, Citroen, they've all abandoned their smallest cars. And that has left a big gap in the market. Toyota is hoping to fill it with this, the iGo Cross. But is it the city car saviour that we've been waiting for? And by looks of things, yes, it might just be, because look at it. It's adorable. Then you've got the plastic wheel arch clad in, bit of a two-tone thing going on. Hello, tinted rear windows, very nice. I mean, it's taken a lot of its design inspiration from the Toyota iQ by pushing the wheels all the way out to the corners. Little bug-eyed headlights. But the thing is, right, is Toyota are claiming that this is SUV inspired, and that, my friends, is a lie. Because this might be a little bit wide, a little bit tall, a little bit longer than its predecessor with a bit more ground clearance but don't be fooled this is a front wheel drive little hatchback that's it do not take this thing off road uh, i found that out the hard way far more important is how the car performs on actual roads and we've got high hopes the argo cross is built on toyota's latest tngab platform meaning there's a modern sophisticated skeleton underneath when you peel away that adorable body and what do you know when you drive it you can tell now this argo cross actually feels quite grown up in a way it handles lumps and bumps in the road like a bigger car would handles quite nicely the steering is nice and direct when it takes corners there's a little bit of body roll yes but i mean it's quite pleasant now it shares the same platform as the bigger yaris and the yaris cross it doesn't sort of throw you around all over the shop like you would expect a city car to do but here's one thing right i know i'm saying that it feels like quite a grown-up car but what this car does is it makes you feel like you're 17 again, like you've just started driving again. Let me show you. It takes you back to when you first learnt to drive. When I was 17 in 2005, which is where this engine is from, you really have to rev it to get it going, otherwise you stall it. Almost like that. <laughs> True story, I picked this car up yesterday before we filmed it. it, took me 12 minutes to get home and I stalled it twice, twice. I hadn't stalled a car in 10 years, and I stalled it twice. And here lies a bit of a problem with the Argo Cross. The engine. This is a brand new car, and Toyota are still using the tiny little one-litre three-cylinder motor that can trace its roots all the way back to the original Argo, and that came out in 2005. Now, of course, this is a very small, light car. It's not exactly, um, should we say, quick. I mean, it's got 71 brake horsepower. So, yes, you do have to work it quite hard to get it to go. My foot is on the floor right now. My foot's on the floor. There is no shove in my back whatsoever. I mean, it does get up to 62. It just takes you 15 seconds to get there. I mean, what can I do in 15 seconds? Make a cup of tea? Lovely. No sugar, thank you. As you might have heard, it's not the quietest or smoothest engine either. It can return, though, just over 50 miles per gallon from our testing. That's not bad at all. Here's the thing, right? Toyota are in a little bit of a sticky situation. Because combustion engines are slowly disappearing, it didn't seem feasible to make a whole new engine for this car. So then they thought, well, maybe we'll try a hybrid, maybe we'll try an electric. But no, once you start adding in batteries and all that sort of thing, it makes it chunky and heavier and more expensive. So no, one litre, three cylinder it is. So the iGo Cross is decent to drive most of the time. It's easy to dart around in, it feels compact, the ride is pretty good, it doesn't massively change the game in many ways though. That is until you step inside. The interior is a huge improvement over the last model. Now you may recognise this steering wheel, that is because folks this is taken from the GR Yaris hot hatch. What a car! Which means it's a lovely steering wheel to hold, it's quite satisfying to hold while you're driving. Now overall in here, 
I mean, it's still quite solidly built, isn't it? I mean, yes, of course, you've got plasticky bits, but what else can you expect? The body colour stuff is quite nice. I mean, it feels cheap, but it's nice to have that little splash of colour. It's quite nice, actually, because Toyota messaged me and they were like, we're going to call this Auto Express Red, which is lovely. Isn't that chilli red? Auto Express Red is what they said they're going to call it. So that's a fact. Fact. Oh, I do like the sort of overly look that you've got for the infotainment system, which is, this is the thing with gloss black, is it makes everything so dusty so easily. And when you're trying to film it, it just makes everything look, I've made it worse. Right, base spec comes with seven inch screen. As you go up through the specs, you can go up to a nine inch screen. It's fine. I like the buttons down the side, nice and easy to use. I mean, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's nice and responsive, fine, lovely, lovely. The dials, You've got like uh, analog dials that shows you your speed, but then it looks like someone's just left their phone behind. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Like someone's gone, oh, let's not put the screen into, let's not have it flush. Let's just get a phone and just screw it, just leave it there. That, that'll look quite nice. I mean, it shows you everything you need to know. It's fine. It's just quite a weird design, I think. Now, as standard, you've got auto high beam, road sign recognition and adaptive cruise control then as you step up you can opt for led lights or you can have wireless charging and front and rear parking sensors as well oh and a rear parking camera which is all quite lovely oh and if you want to opt for something else there's a folding canvas sunroof which just makes the car even more adorable i don't think it can get any more adorable but it does when you get that this is a dinky little city car, so Toyota only had a certain amount of space to work with, but even still, the Igo Cross is nice and roomy in the front. You sit just over 5 centimetres higher than before as well, and you can get a 231 litre boot that is 60 more than before, and 50 more than a Fiat 500. Unfortunately though, things go a bit downhill from there. With the Igo Cross, Toyota decided to increase the car's boot space rather than rear leg room. So the second row is still only suitable for children, really. Oh, and it's quite dark back there. Now look, there are some compromises to be made when it comes to this car, but you might, like me, have a little soft spot for its adorableness. It's so cute. <laughs> okay, okay. 